What's up, world? Welcome to the Jennifer Grace Show, where you can get unstuck, make shift happen, and not take life so seriously. Yay! Welcome! I have Val Solidger in the house. Nailed yes, <laughs> amazing. And so Val, not only is she a dear friend of mine, mm-hmm. we've been working and playing together for like a decade now. Mm-hmm. Um, she is also a psychosynthesis life coach, and we're going to get into what that exactly means. Uh, she's the founder of Inspired Life Workshops, Expand the Love, and of course the Zen Cruise, which I got to be on a few times. Amazing. Um, She is a deep ecologist, an inspirational speaker, facilitator, psychosynthesis coach. Wow, I got that one right. As well as a transformational event producer who has been building community and empowering individuals and groups both nationally and internationally for over 15 years. Welcome to the show, Val. Thank you, Jen. And if that's not enough, I have to talk about psychospiritual coaching because this is the last few years been a real focus. Yes. Diving into this beautiful Yay. work. Well, yeah. I can't wait to Thank you. learn more about that. I'm so excited to be with you again. I know. We've played like for a while. Did you, Were you on my Hay House show as well? Yeah, you were on my Hay House show twice. And then we did the other Jennifer Grace web series and we yeah. did our parodies. Our parodies. <laughs> yeah, you guys got to check out uh, on YouTube our Tinder for couple skits. It's <laughs> hilarious. It's awesome. Yeah. And, um, So, yes, to me, when I think of Val, I think of community, you know, Mm -hmm. and you've done an incredible job over the last 15 years of pulling our community together from, you know, Miami through Palm Beach and on the outskirts and really having these amazing gatherings. I remember the very first time I met you, we were on the ocean and there was a meditation for the ocean. There was a beach cleanup. I can't remember all the details, but you yeah. were running around with your clipboard. You were taking names. You were organizing. And I was like, wow, who is this woman? So I just want to thank you for your service and for your work and all the amazing things that you do in the world. Mm. You really inspire me. Oh, thank you. The feeling is absolutely mutual. Thanks. You know, I think we're all like spokes in a wheel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> we do what we do from our hearts and we turn that wheel. The great turning. I love moving it. Moving into the future. Yeah. Great. So today's show is called Psycho Spiritual. And that does not mean that you're spiritual and you're also psycho. That's not what it means. Oh, that can happen no. from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us even where that name came from? Yeah, sure. So, well, psycho-spiritual really refers to looking at us as whole beings, Mm -hmm. both as psychological beings and as spiritual beings. You know, and it's the main focus for this work that I do in psychosynthesis, Mm -hmm. you know, which is understanding who we are in that deepest level, right? And not just who we are as this human having, you know, this experience here, the psyche, right? The psyche and understanding all of that, which is super important, but not to neglect this a whole other part of how we connect to what's beyond this body, this mind, these thoughts, you know, beyond our individual self into that collective, yes. yummy field of mystery. Yeah. yeah. And how did you get um, into this field? Because you started out doing a lot of community building and then you wanted to probably go deeper. Did you do this work as a student first? How did it all come about? Yeah, I did actually. <clears throat> I think the best way for us to teach anything is to be in the constant, consistent practice for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, my in a nutshell, <laughs> right? That would be the whole show. If yeah. I told you my story. But in a nutshell, like I started off really in the world of activism mm-hmm. and community organization and building towards you know a deeper conversation, a more connected world, like really recognizing what's happening in our world that's creating suffering. Mm-hmm. And going from that like huge role of you know organizing massive demonstrations and uh, all these incredible events yeah. that invite us into ourselves on a deeper level and to take action in our world, and the more the just the deeper that I've gone, the more it is so clear to me that true transformation begins within. Yeah. So I'm still doing those events. Yep. It's all happening simultaneously. And over the last well, over the last ten years I've been coaching and working with individuals and groups. And over the last couple of years I've been inviting people on that journey. Yeah. You know, into the training of this work. So going really deep into what it means to create self change. 
Mm. and self-leadership wow. and how we take that understanding then forward into action in yeah. our world. Got you it. Know? So, you know, it's so interesting. I was watching a really cool film the other day. Um, the word peace is in it and root is in it. And I can't remember the entire title, but I do want to show you the film because it had to do with ecology and activism and peace and mm. they were really doing this amazing study um, it was a it was a gentleman this guy Greg who is a documenter and he went to this video game um, conference and they were just all war games you know and he was like I'm just looking is there any peace games here you know it was really interesting and then just looking he was going back in his comic books where he grew up yeah you know and just looking at all the violence and all the war and everything that um, we are what's the word it's given conditioning, uh, conditioning. Us. Yeah, yeah exactly constantly shaping us. yeah and yeah. then um, it was interesting Deepak was interviewed um, for this film and he was speaking about it. he goes it finds he finds it very ironic that um, a lot of peace activists are angry. Yeah. yeah. Right. And yep. so this this interesting part of activism, right, when it's fueled by anger and frustration, and like, how do you be a peace activist and do it peacefully? Right. I would so, love to speak to that for a second. Yeah, I would love been... you too, because it was that was like my biggest yeah. thing in the film. I was like, wow. Oh, you yeah. Know, like, oh my gosh. It's such a, this is the center point of my own journey because starting off in my early twenties, like two decades, over two decades ago, yeah. um, I realized like when, when all of a sudden you wake up to what's happening in our world in a way that you haven't thought about before, mm -hmm. a lot of emotions rise up. You know, it's, it's frustrating. You, you're angry at yourself. You're angry at the world. You're angry. There's a lot of emotions. And so I found myself, you know, as an, just naturally a leader. That's just yeah. part of me. So I was already organizing demonstrations, you know, and doing these things. Yeah. And I saw a lot of people out there like yelling and screaming, how can you do this? How yeah. can you? And it's like, whoo, mm -hmm. right away. Like this, I, my body just was like cringing. I, this is not how we create conversation. Right. Dialogue. And so yeah. dialogue, conversation, communication, mm -hmm. it has to be an invitation that comes from love. And so it's not so much trying to, you know, put people in a state of fear or scare them away or make them feel guilty. It's about inviting them to fall in love with life, mm. to fall in love with themselves and what's possible and the potential for unity and living in a peaceful way. Yeah. So we can be angry and have that righteous anger and understand that underneath it is our passion for justice. Right. And we can feel the grief of the loss of what's happening around our world or in our personal lives yeah. and understand that underneath that is our love. Right. For life. And so underneath those emotions, if we don't go deep enough uh -huh. into ourselves, right. Right, right, this work brings us in because it brings us ultimately to the space of love and Always. awareness. And then we act from that space. Yeah. And that's true activism. Yeah. Because otherwise we create, we're, we're feeding into the duality. We're feeding into this idea of illusion of separation mm -hmm. rather than loving what feels like the opposition and inviting them into yeah. the space of love. Yeah. And I think dialoguing, you know, when it's all well and good when you are looking at the other side and you're looking at it in a stereotypical way and you're just kind of identifying with these two sides. But what I think the greatest shifts happen is when dialogue happens between these groups. And my mother's an activist. I don't know if you know that about her. She was in the women's rights, her and Gloria Steinem started five women's centers, you know, in the seventies. And then she did a lot of, um, gay rights activism. Uh, and she actually went to Israel and she did a peace conference between the Israeli women and the Palestinian women. And it's always through dialogue, like human dialoguing. <clears throat> and as of late, um, she's really a stand for child sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. She is a survivor an incest survivor. So she does dialoguing between the perpetrators who have gone through, you know, a great program and they want to, you know, get to the other side and um, the survivors. So men who have committed acts of sexual crime with women that have had it and they have wow. dialogue. Wow. And, and it's amazing, like when you do human to human and it's not massive amounts of people just, um, so she feels like dialoguing is that 
you know, the, the place where people can really see each other, you know, it's like a human experience. Absolutely. It's Mm -hmm. powerful. Really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, this movie was, it blew me away. So you definitely have to see the film. Roots and... Roots and Peace. Peace. Peace Roots. Peace is in the roots. (laughs) That's not the name, but I'll find it. All right. Continue. So how do you take somebody, you know, like down the stairs, like into this depth and this Mm. deep, deep journey for them to emerge, you know, this, um, well, whatever it is that you want them to emerge as the most balanced and joyful, peaceful, you know, place that they could be in their lives. Yeah. What's like the process like of doing this psychosynthesis? Yes. Yeah, right? Yes, yeah. Beautiful. Tell me it. about this. I'm so curious. Yeah. So, you know, we really begin by observing, mm. observing mm. ourselves. And mm-hmm. I think a good way to say it is that it starts with heffalumps and woozles. <laughs> So my, I almost spit my water all right, out. Good, trying to get your attention. Okay. Heffalumps and woozles. This is where it's at, Jen. See, my four-year-old is totally into Winnie the Pooh right now. Oh. You know, and I'm getting to relive Winnie the Pooh through him. It's How really fun. fun. And something that Pooh and all his friends are afraid of are heffalumps and woozles. Okay. And heffalumps and woozles are those things, those entities that take away our joy. Okay. That pull us away from being who we are. Right. Right. So we begin by understanding and taking a look at ourselves, our social roles, our thoughts, our feelings and sensations, and the ways that we identify ourselves Mm -hmm. that can keep us limited. Got it. So we begin there because this is our process towards freedom, right? So we begin to take a look and observe what's going on inside of us and the ways that we're not really living who we truly are, Mm -hmm. right? Because we don't know who we truly are when we get caught up in these smaller identities or ways right. of being, right? right? And I know you know all about this yeah. work. Yeah. So who we truly are is the observer. Yeah. Right? And we are invite ourselves to take one step deeper and observe what's happening in our body and our thoughts. And we recognize that the one that we are, the one who we are, is the one who is aware of the contents of our consciousness. Mm, and not so I love identified that. with our consciousness. Yeah. Right? So we become the observer. We become the one who's experiencing and expressing ourselves through these roles. Mm-hmm. Right? So when we get too caught up in these little roles, we lose sight of what's possible. Yeah. So for instance, somebody might um, identify themselves as, let's say, a model. Mm-hmm. Okay. So their center point becomes, I'm a model. And it's all about beauty. It's all about how I look in the world and my mm. physical appearance. And so mm. they're become, they become limited by this identity. They don't right. have access to all the other possibilities of what they may be mm-hmm. or what's really aligned with who they are. Maybe they were shaped that way as a child or their parents forced them into modeling. Who knows? Right. So they're living this world of a model. But as they get older and they begin to change and age and not get so much work and then eventually they're not really working as a model anymore, they right. all of a sudden don't know who they are. If right. you're lost, right. right? Or another example could be a mother. I'm a mother, and e- your whole yeah. world revolves around that, which in one level is very beautiful and can be limiting. Yeah. What happens when your child is 18 and flies from the nest? Yeah. And now you're left with you didn't educate yourself, you didn't learn about things in the world because all you are, are, are you were identified with was the mother. Yeah. So it's really important that we get to note how we identify ourselves or mm-hmm. how we limit ourselves through the ways we think yep. or behave, right? Which is all related, right? Because okay. our beliefs create our thoughts, right? And our thoughts create our emotions. That, there's that, that loop, that thought feeling yep. loop. And then we act from that space. So once we become more aware, we gain clarity. Mm-hmm. We step back into that role of the observer. And from this space, we become the director, right? We get to be the conductor of all these different identities and roles that are possible to play. Right. And we get to really become centered in who we are, which is ultimately awareness. Yep. Pure self-awareness, right? That is what we are in Mm -hmm. in that deeper core. So we begin by observing, noticing all those woozles and heffalums and things (laughs) that are keeping us feeling small or not aligned or limited. Yeah. And we notice it in our bodies too, because whenever we feel like we're not in our pure, beautiful, graceful, state, which is our natural state, when we yeah. move into some kind of suffering state, immediately we're told that whatever's going on is not in alignment. Mm. Whatever's going on is too small. Whatever's yeah. going on isn't true. So we kind of have to, we got to pay attention to our bodies. And once we notice, right, we start noticing these limiting ideas, these limited roles, then we get to step into that space where we can now embrace them. Yeah. So we don't want to give death to anything. We want to really get what it is. 
We want to embrace what it is. We want to find the gifts that are inside these experiences, these lessons, these roles. Yep. Um, notice how to use them powerfully because we're still going to be the mother. Of course. We might still work as a model. Right. But we're not only identified that. with that. Yeah. Right. Now we get to play as the mother and play as that. And then we can step back into ourselves, deeper into ourselves, and also be this and this and that and really start identifying what's there. Yeah. So we accept and embrace ourselves unconditionally. Right? And it doesn't mean we have to agree with everything we're thinking or doing. Right. As a matter of fact, we can totally disagree with it, which is the point of stepping into ourselves and saying, "Woo, that's not working for me. Right. So now we can actually begin to shift things. Right. And how do you do you do a you don't need to go into it totally, but do you do practical exercises oh, yeah. to yeah. identify these different personas? Absolutely. Then, yeah. So what we, we call them sub personalities. Okay. Right? When we take on these different roles that are not who are who we are. And I like this idea so much because um, it's not just like I have this limiting belief and it's all here. We get to actually take a step deeper. So we create this sort of view point mm, mm -hmm. where we can now say, well, here's a sub personality. Here's another one. Here's another one. And some of them are working for me. Some of them aren't. Yeah. So who is the one that thinks I can't speak in public? Who is the one that thinks you're not creative? Yeah. Right. Oh, there's this one in me that's the non-creative, you know, but really if I tune back into myself, I'm connected to ultimate creativity of the universe because that's what I am. Right. And if I allow myself, it will flow through me in some way. It may not look like drawing, but there's creativity that can be expressed. Yeah. And if we feel like we're not creative and we live that subpersonality, we limit our access to ultimate creativity. Yeah. So for example, so we get to do, there's a disidentification exercise that I, I won't take you through it today, but it's really cool and it allows us to notice that we have a body and, and appreciate our body and yeah. we are more than our body. Right. We have these thoughts and we can appreciate our ability to think deeply and all this and we are not yeah, our this. thoughts. Yeah. And we have these emotions and our ability to feel deeply with the world and, and they're fleeting, they come and go. And right. so we are not our thoughts, right? And it brings us back into ourself. Who are mm -hmm. we then? Mm -hmm. And we are the center of pure self-consciousness. Right. And it's so this is this dance that we get to do. And it's not like we clear them all up and we're done. It's, yeah. a, it's a life work sure. of identifying, disidentifying. Yeah. We disidentify to come into our deeper self. Yeah. So first we have to identify and, and observe Notice. what that is. Mm -hmm. And then we get to come to the point where we can let go what doesn't work for us. Yeah. And take in what does work for us you know, and, and just uh, integrate it into our being. Yeah. It's so interesting, you know, people who have had those awakening experiences, like our friend Ash, <laughs> Byron Katie, Ash, Eckhart Tolle, Michael Singer, you know, they've yeah. all told these stories of having these um, quite profound moments of awakening and enlightenment. And then for the rest of our folk like us and the rest of the world, right? We just kind of do this dance back and forth between being in it and being above it or not like above it, but transcending it, right? And being the watcher and then being in the sub identity and then coming back to the watcher. And what I've noticed on my own path of transformation is, you know, that bounce back time is quicker. Mm. And then I'm mostly in self-awareness, even when the stuff is going on and the reaction is coming up, I'm very aware that I am reacting. Absolutely. You know, like yes. at all times I am aware, right? Now, can I, how fast can I let go yeah. and soften and come back to the truth of who I am, which is an infinite being living in a finite world, you know? And I think that's the work is, is being in a constant state of remembering who you are and this work gets you, you know, to do that first and foremost, just to like separate, well, wait a minute. So this is not who I am and this is not who I am and this is who I am. And then we, we go into forgetfulness, which is why we teach and practice mindfulness. Absolutely. Right? Just this remembrance. So I love that process. You know, I do something different in, in CIJ, but similar. It's the same come from. And then people are like, well, are we, are we like Sybil? Do we have like multiple personalities? I'm like, well, sort of, but not completely. And I think for students in the beginning, it's like, <gasps> you know, but then, then they start to get in it and it's pretty simple. Yeah. Not so. 
you know. <clears throat> it's simple and it, and it definitely requires practice. Yes. And I can guarantee you that even all of those beautiful pe people that you listed off, they still have these moments. Oh, yeah. Of they oh, get yeah. caught up in the identity. They yep. recognize it. Step and deeper. Take that breath. Because, yeah. you know, the breath is really this connecting point that deepens yeah. us into presence. Yeah. You know what I want to say? Mm. So, because I'm so into this whole enlightenment thing, I think it's fascinating. What I think had happened for them was that they actually did has had an elongated period, whether it was 24 hours or two weeks, right? Where they were in a constant state of bliss and awareness, like constant, that they weren't going in and out, right? And even they speak of, oh, and now I'm going to chase that feeling for the rest of my life because it is not long withstanding. I mean, until probably you die. Then you feel it all the time because you're a part of pure consciousness. But um, yeah, you're absolutely right. And I um, had a very cool experience. I was at um, near the temple where Michael Singer is up in Gainesville and I rent a farmhouse there and I do retreats there, but I was there alone this time. And it was about four o'clock in the afternoon and all of the, you know, the light was playing in the room and I just sat up and, you know, I think people on the spiritual path are waiting for the booming voice. They're waiting for that moment that they reach enlightenment. And I just kind of bolted up and I said, well, what if I could just choose it? Like just in this moment, like I'm just choosing to be enlightened. I don't need to have this crazy wild experience that it could even just be a choice. And then I downloaded my third book because my second book is coming out. My third book, it's titled... Uh, you are enlightened. The next page is so am I. The next page is we both just forgot. The next page is the end. Yeah. <laughs> and that's perfect, right? Because when we step back into that space of self, of pure consciousness, we're all always already here. Yeah. Always already here. Yeah. And then, you know, through society and conditioning and all those things we started talking about before, we kind of pile on those layers. Sure. So when we're able to step in and start, ooh, peeling those layers off, yeah. right? We realize how good it feels. Yeah. And we also realize that in that center point is not just awareness, but it's also will. Mm. Right? So when we allow ourselves to become deeply present, we get that we're not just awareness, but we're also will. And not we have a will, but we are will. The ability to act on what we become aware of in right. ourselves. Right? Because it's not enough to just be passive observers. Mm -mm. Like, okay, well, there, there, there it is. Good to know. Yeah. Right? Now we got to take action and make choices mm -hmm. that align with what we know we are. Yeah. You know, and that's a whole big, beautiful world of activating the will to be ourselves. Of course, I'm imagining that the clarity comes first, right? Of, of going through this disidentification process, right? Absolutely. And then before the will, I'm sure there's a period in the work that you do with people that getting in touch with that <clears throat> thing to be willful about. Yeah. Right. That's the whole awareness process. Yeah. Right. So when we sink into our space of awareness, like we really start to get who we are in this deepest level, we get to tune into our deeper calling, our deeper purpose, mm -hmm. right? That, that unique thing that is ours, that's planted in the seed of us Yeah. that we can then start to nurture and grow. Mm -hmm. right? When we notice that we move into a suffering state and we bring ourselves back into that beautiful state, then we know, okay, now the choices we make can be aligned with this. Yeah. And we can feel a difference. Like we have all of these ways to, to tune in through our bodies and our intuition and, you know, the, the emotional guidance system that tells yeah. us here we are, right? So this is where the, the clarity takes place. Mm -hmm. You know, where we really get clear about what it is we want to create for ourselves. Yeah. What is that next step that is in alignment, you know, where we can get that courage to leave the job that doesn't, Fulfill us, yeah. yeah, or the relationship that's really not where we feel stuck, yeah. You know all of those things. So I love yeah, that. yeah, it's becoming it's coming into that space of awareness and will, awareness and will, awareness and will, and um, and that then moves us into our power, yeah. Because once we get who we are on that level, then we get to activate the power of authenticity mm. and the freedom to express ourselves. Right. exactly as we are who we are without expectations from society or the should and shouldn'ts of what we're right. supposed to be 
right? Now we get to actually align and there's no greater power in the world than being ourselves. Yeah. That's the greatest power because you are completely unique. There's no one that can do what you do the way you do it. There's right. no one that can do what I do the way I do right. it with my DNA and my experiences and my heartbreaks and my joys and my skill sets and all of this, all of this that makes us who we are. Yeah. When we activate that, it's over. We're totally in our power. Yeah. Right. Totally. We get to be in will. We get to constantly move through that. Yeah. And the cool thing is like we notice our will. We notice it as a calling towards something deeper. Mm -hmm. Like there's something calling us. We all have this inside of us. We may ignore it. Yeah. We may continue doing the things that make us feel stuck because we feel like we have to, or we tell ourselves ourselves a story. Yeah. But the reality is it's here. The will is the longing for freedom and authenticity that is inside of all of us. And if we tune in, we can really feel into that evolution at that evolutionary urge that wants to push us out of our comfort zone mm. and move us toward freedom, toward, you know, living into our potential yeah. and being who we are meant to be. Right. And that's what it is. And it's so funny. Like so many people just need a permission slip to do that. Like you have my permission. You don't need it. Yeah. But here's your permission slip that mm. you get to be exactly who you are and it's perfectly awesome. You it's know. so important that we give ourselves that permission, right? Because only we can. Yeah. Like, and we'll, we'll go through a million workshops yeah. and be constant seekers, but we'll never right. get there until we give ourselves permission to be who we are yeah. and not worry what people think about us. Yeah. I know we do it to a certain point. We do it on this human journey, but how sure. can we go deeper and express ourselves fully and freely as we are? Yeah. You know, who we are and our actual identity is really shaped by our conscious and unconscious choices. Mm. So what if our choices become conscious? Right. How does that shift our identity? Then we actually get to shape ourselves, like really get to create the person that we want to be. Yep. And that's ultimate power, right? Totally. Yeah. That's the beauty. And do you do this work mostly one-on-one -on -one, <clears throat> or are you able to do this in a group process as well? Yeah, I do both. Mm -hmm. I work with groups. I work with individuals and I have a nine month coach training program yep. where we go, d we do this work on ourselves because oh, we, cool. we, you can't, we can't, you can't hold the space work. unless you're doing it. So right. if they, they're learning all of this, they're going really deep into the practice of it. And then they're also learning how to be guides for mm. others around these processes. And there's obviously much more than we can possibly cover in this hour today. Right. You know, but there's so many beautiful ways in. There's so many incredible tools and by no means is it limited to this particular type of work. There's a million ways that we can become deeply aware sure. that we can activate our will, that we can yeah. align ourselves with who we are, that we can understand how to, how to transform our limiting beliefs, yeah. these limiting ideas of who we are and, and make a new choice that mm. brings us into that beautiful state. And from that space, then go back and look for all the evidence that supports it, right. that we filtered out before because we weren't looking for it. Yeah. Right. So we, when we get into that space of activation, we get to get into the space then of creation. I love that. Yeah. So I know that you're going to share with everybody one of the processes, right? A deep meditation experience yes. with everybody yes. so that they can have a, a powerful kind of taste of what you do. And so we're going to take a little musical break right now. And when we come back, we're going to go through a very wonderful experience with that. So just stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yep. So we were just talking about the will yep. on break and understanding that when we awaken our will, right, then our sense of direction becomes really clear yeah. and we get to consciously choose who we are, what we're stepping into. We get to choose the identities we take on. We get to play in all these various roles. Right? Yes. And so this is where we get to actually create ourselves. And mm -hmm. so the will plus activating our imagination equals everything we want, our goals, yeah. right? Who we want to be. So the imagination begins to play a very big role here. Okay. So there was a um, study done at Harvard where they, they looked at piano players okay. and they were playing piano and they checked to see what parts of the brain were activated while they played. Okay. And then they took the piano away and had them imagine playing the piano mm -hmm. and the same parts of the brain lit up. Yeah. You know, and there's been lots of studies like this. That yeah, shows with runners this. and the race and winning the race in exactly. their mind versus actually running it. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. So what we learned is that the imagination, the brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and what we call reality. Ah. Right. And so this is where we get to literally create our world. Yes. We get to imagine and dream 
ourselves into being our world into being, yes. you know, we do this both on an individual level and we do this on a collective level. Mm-hmm. Like if we were talking about those war games. Yeah. So we have this dream that, that many people are stuck in, which leads to this dystopian post-apocalyptic world. Like we see right. it in sci-fi, right? There's this dream that we can literally see our world living into. Yeah. Everything begins in the imagination. Mm. But what if we s- turn that and create a new dream, which is what has been happening and is continuing to happen on larger and larger levels. Yeah. We're imagining a new future, yes. a new way of living into more harmonious in mm. line with the earth, in line with who we are, you know, connected to each other. So this is all about imagination. So now we get to stop and tune in to how we can visualize ourselves clearly and feel deeply into what we can become. Yes. So we call this the ideal model. Okay. Now there's other things that we have been living ourselves into from this unconscious space, right? right? Not being totally aware, not having activated our will that we've been living into. And so let's take a look real quick at some of the false models. Okay. Because I'm sure everybody can relate to this. Yeah. So sometimes uh, we see ourselves as what we believe who we believe we are. Right. All right. So we may over evaluate or under evaluate ourselves. Okay. Right? We might see ourselves as stupid or too skinny or name it too old. I wish that I saw myself as too skinny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> so we may have this false identity, this false model of ourselves of yep. who we are. And that's, that's what we think about ourselves. Um, we also create a false model around what we think we should be like. This mm. ideal, unattainable version right. of ourselves that we could not possibly live into. Right. There's no sense of reality in it at all. Mm. And so then we're, we're constantly feeling like we can't reach not this. Enough, we're right. not, not enough, right? Then there's um, what we should like to appear to be to others, right? So what others maybe expect, right? So mm. we're trying to appear this way to this person and maybe appear that way to that person. Right. So we live ourselves into that. We may create an image of what others project on us, mm-hmm. right? Who they expect us right. to be. Your and then we try to live into that. that. Yeah, right. exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and even society. Yeah. And then we could imagine um, and create ourselves around what others evoke and produce in us. Okay. So imagining we have like a very religious family, let's say, mm. and over time they tell you you're a sinner, you're evil. You start to believe that this is who you are. Right? right. So there's all these different ways and more that we create have created ourselves. And if we stop to take a look at that, we can see it's not, it's not who we are. Right? right. We come back into ourselves and align with our will. We then get to create the ideal model. Yes. And the ideal model then is completely aligned with what we are knowing about ourselves from the space of awareness. Mm -hmm. Then we get to imagine ourselves. Like Mm. literally we have a beautiful exercise where we have people draw all these false models Oh, cool. and, and create some writing around that. Yeah. And then we have them breathe in. Right. And we take them through a process that then brings them to their ideal model. Okay. And we get to create that. Nice. So what is the next step of my evolution? Mm. What can I live myself into that feels attainable yep. and is totally aligned? Yeah. Right? What does that look like? Tell me everything about that ideal model, mm. what they think, what they feel, what they believe, what they, what they work, what's their relationship like. If you can create that. So we activate the imagination as a crucial point to creating more focus. Got it. Right? So this is our way to focus mm. more clearly on our authentic personality. I love that. that. That's powerful. It's very powerful. Mm. Yeah. So this is Break a process. Down. Breaking, Breaking it down. down right? yeah. Breaking it down. We're disidentifying from those identities. Yeah. We're coming into a deeper space of presence. We're activating our will right. and aligning with who we are and feeling and hearing that calling to live authentically. Yeah. And then we get to create from that. Space. I just saw it like all in these white big pieces of paper, just like all these map. false. It's the map. You know, <laughs> all the identities and all yeah. the false models and like just all it is and like then rah, just rip it all up and this new fresh white paper. And yes. Here's my ideal model. And you can Here's literally rip them all up. Yeah. You can literally burn them to yeah. ashes and release them. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's that's like we get to that's choose. So powerful. And then you're in the driver's seat, you that's know, because right. then you're at the power of choice in every moment, you know, you get to choose. Like, no, this is not who yeah. I am. And over time we create new habits, right? Mm-hmm. Because we, we do sure. get stuck in these habits of Absolutely. belief and habits of action that keep us stuck and mm-hmm. emotional responses and reactions. When we get to choose, right? Our, our beliefs are really decisions. Yeah. Right? So we get to create new belief structures, mm-hmm. new thoughts that are connected to that, yep. right? New emotional responses to those thoughts, mm. new actions, yep. and therefore new results. 
new wow. results, right? This is how we create our life. Yeah. The results always mirror our belief. And if our beliefs are limited, yep. our results are limited. And we're going to think that, that our results are saying, see, it happened again. See, That's why I, I believe right. this. Yeah. But the reality is that we are believing it. So we are creating it over yeah, and over. Not the other way around. So this is how we get to create not only ourselves, but our reality that yep. we're living into. Nice. Powerful. Love it. Yes. All right. So are you ready to activate your will? I'm ready. I think I'm going to lie down. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. I mean, Val is here. She's like the most incredible coach. I might as well get something. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I can't wait to, okay. to dive in with you. We got you. music too. John. Mm. Mm, beautiful. So for everyone that's tuning in, you know, we're, I'm going to, we're going to do this with, for all of you and Jen's going to be here too. Um, just if you have the ability to create a space right now where you can focus and let go of any distractions, I'll invite you into that. Um, if you can't do that at the moment, just follow along and then come back, come back to the, the recording and do this for yourself because it's a very powerful journey. So first I want to invite you to think about some of the main purposes in your life. So as we, as we tune in and become more aware, we also get to tune into what we're called for in this world uh, and the purpose that we want to live into. And they can also be smaller purposes, you know, things we want to accomplish in our lives that are also aligned with who we are. So begin to think of all the most important purposes that come to your mind right now. They can be abstract or concrete. They can be seem far or they can be near something you want to do right now. They can range from self-realization to painting the garage or learning a new language or anything in between. Anything goes as long as it's important to you and it's a real purpose, not just a, a should, but something that you know calls you deeply on some level of your being. So just breathe into, into that space and see what comes to you. And as you notice these various things that are popping up in your mind, begin to focus on one, one purpose that feels really important in your life right now. And close your eyes if you haven't already. Breathing in to your awareness of this purpose. Allow an image to spontaneously emerge that symbolizes this purpose for you. Don't try to create it, just allow it. It doesn't have to make any sense. It can be an object of nature, an animal, a person, a color, it could be anything. And with your eyes still closed, with the symbol inside you, imagine that in front of you lies a long, straight, clear path reaching directly to the top of a mountain. On the top of the mountain, you can perceive from afar the image, the symbol that you've chosen as your purpose. And slowly begin to walk on your path. And as you do, notice on both sides of the path that you can see and hear and feel the presence of beings of various kinds who will try to divert you from your path and prevent you from reaching the top. They can do absolutely anything they want except for one thing. They cannot literally obstruct your path. Your path always remains straight and clear before you. 
Now these entities represent various situations or people, distractions, even inner states of your life, your thoughts, your emotions. And they have a great number of strategies that they use to try to divert you. They'll try to discourage you, seduce you. They'll try to frighten you. They may give you logical reasons why it's not worthwhile to continue or why it's even absurd for you to go on. They may try to intimidate you or make you feel guilty or any other various ways to pull you from your path. Just notice what's coming. And as you continue to walk, experience yourself as clear, embodied will. And proceed on your path. Each step, a clear choice. And as you do, take some time to understand the strategy of each of these entities. Feel its pull. You can even have an imaginary dialogue with an entity and then move on. And as you do this, Continue to experience yourself as the willer. Take a few moments to do this now. As we all know, some of these entities can exert a very strong and sometimes overwhelming pull on us. And while they can divert us from our path, none of them can truly block it. None of them can actually enter in to that deep center, that space of awareness and will. It is only you who can choose to leave your path. In fact, our wills need strengthening, which is precisely why we do this work. It's why we practice this work. And as you continue to walk, feeling your inner power, feeling the activation of that will, yourself as will, continue walking your path until you reach the top of the mountain. And when you reach the top, face the image representing your purpose. And take a few moments to Be present with this symbol. Notice how it feels to be there. See what the symbol has to communicate with you. What is the message? And 
And now taking a nice deep full breath. When you're ready, begin to make your way down the mountain. This time with ease and clarity, inner strength and awareness. Notice how it feels now as you travel forward down the mountain to the place you began. There's nothing in your path. And when you arrive at the beginning, take a look at that path that you've just traveled. Notice how you feel. Breathe into that awareness that sensation, that embodied experience of will. And know that at any time in your life, you have access to this because you are this, you are will. You get to make conscious choices about how to proceed, no matter what tries to pull you from your path. Bring a smile to your face. Knowing that you are a powerful creator. that everything is possible inside of you. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. Breathing into your body. Being fully here. That was incredible. So the first thing that happened was, um, I guess because I was just at the one hotel doing um, a rooftop meditation for the full moon meditation, and there was like hundreds of people there. And um, and I shared with you on the phone last night, I had recently been told by this person who does hand scientific hand analysis, she looked at my print and she said, ah, your purpose is you're a community builder. And Welcome to the team. Thank you, Val. Because <laughs> I, I, I shared with Val on the phone last night, like I see her as the community builder and like I never identified with that, you know? Although that's what I do, you know? And it was, it was I burst into tears. Like it really yeah. resonates like when you hear the truth and you know the truth and it was like, wow. And then, um, you know, anyway, so there I was on the rooftop in the meditation and I had grabbed a few people's hands and just kind of lifted them up and they were grabbing all these hands and we were just kind of transcending and and then just free floating you know without suffering and this place of freedom and peace and joy and just it was almost like i kept thinking of this you know it's funny when you go into meditation you remember the the magnet board of a face and you would draw the magnet of the mustache yes, and like the eyebrows. So it was almost like we were pulling people up magnetically mm. um, like that game when we were kids. And then it was just like this ripple effect where all of Miami was like floating and we were just having this incredible effect on people. And it was the words that were coming as purpose were 
Um, I'm here for peace, for community building, um, for evolution, for transcendence, for joy, for celebration, you know, mm. like those types of things that were coming up. And then when I got to the mountain, now I've done a lot of work. So there, there weren't really entities, like I saw them kind of on the sidelines, but they, they seemed almost fearful to get in my way. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and it was just this clear shot straight up. And when I got there, it was filled with kids. And in the middle, I'm going to probably start to cry. There was like a, um, just like a schoolhouse, like an old schoolhouse. And I walked in and you could just see like etchings on the desk. And um, it was as if like this, it was time for this to be no longer like this type of schooling, this type of learning where you're in a desk and you're in a square box and you're boxed in and shut in and your creativity isn't allowed out and mm. who you truly are isn't, you know, acknowledged and celebrated. And it was just like, um, you know, this is so we all, all the kids and me lifted up this old school schoolhouse and threw it off the mountain. Mm. And then there was just this big celebration and all these kids were in white and obviously it probably comes down to you know the work that I do we're now bringing it into the school systems we just got the New York Department of Education welcomed in our program and it's gonna grow from here so it's really exciting but that that felt like a deep purpose of mine is to shift the education system worldwide just you know a small small thing right, to take small, on little things little things and you know it's so cool Val like I declared many many um, years ago maybe four or five years ago that I wanted to change that that I wanted to be a catalyst of change of our education system and it was such a big beast that I just said and I don't know how and all I'm gonna do is put my head down and the first thing I did was redesign the training for kids and the second thing I did was train people and the third thing I did was completely let go and it was my trainers that just have taken leadership and gotten it into you know the school systems and it's just like I, it's literally effortless i'm not doing anything yeah and i love that distinction of it's yeah. just being it and being the space for it and yeah there was some will and there was some doing but now it's like i yeah. don't have to do and anything and that's the beauty of it it's yeah. like once you have your spiritual vision once you know mm. what you are meant to do yeah. you don't have to know the how yeah. You just have to get really clear on what you believe about yourself. Totally. You know, and what you want to create. Yeah. Everything else aligns. Like the universe is meeting us there. Every oh, step yeah. we take, the ground meets us, right? Yep. We just have to take those steps. Yeah. And get that clarity of That's like, right. what is it that we're committed to creating? And don't worry about when it's going to happen. And don't worry about how it's going to all down. Just focus on what yes. it is that yes. brings you alive, you That's know, and it. makes you excited every morning you know yeah and that's uh, where we get to be the director of our lives yeah right like say the conductor of the orchestra yeah of all of our personalities of everything yeah. that's possible and then on that deeper level we get to tune in yeah to it's so so here this is all the psyche mm. that we're dancing in right yeah and and we create alignment when we create alignment when we do the work and we practice and we allow our will to you know, utilize our emotions and our thoughts and everything becomes aligned, mm -hmm. we create synthesis, right. psychosynthesis. Uh -huh. you, see where we're at? you create that synthesis and that opens us up to flow. Yep. So on a personal, personal psychosynthesis allows us to align in an effortless way, like a ballet dancer who is yep. practiced and practiced and mm -hmm. over time is just seamless. so seamless and mm -hmm. graceful and effortless. Yeah. Right. Versus maybe a little child who's just starting to get into dancing. Yeah. Right. You can see the practice. Right, life is our practice. You know, yeah. the more we get, we get these tools, we get this awareness, we activate our will, we do it daily, we create new habits of behavior and thought, and all this juicy goodness, mm. and we we live into our world. And the more we do this, the more we activate the possibility and potential, yeah. and we create that synthesis, and we open ourselves to flow. And once we have, and in the process of aligning our personal selves synthesizing right yeah. then we get to open up on a larger level and tune in now to this universal consciousness right yeah. so this cosmic identity mm. and know that there's all this wisdom that we yeah. have access to that doesn't come from us there's a lot of wisdom that comes from our life experience on a personal psychological level yeah. but then there is this and there is this beautiful wisdom that flows through us in the spiritual way as well I love that. Psych psycho spiritual, spiritual. psycho 
synthesis. We got it. We got it. Yeah. That was amazing, Val. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here today on the show and sharing that amazing meditation. How can people either work with you or possibly do your nine-month coaching certification? Thank you. Yeah, so we have a new... We're launching our next course begins September 26th. It's nine months, and it's this beautiful deep dive into not only doing this work, but learning how to be as a guide for others, um, some of the business of coaching. So it's a comprehensive, accredited program, so they can actually... Uh, not only get a certificate, but can qualify then to become a board certified, nationally board certified coach. So it's a high level accreditation. They can work with us. They can find us through psychospiritualcoaching.com. I'll lead everybody there today. Great. um, Because there's just a lot of great info there. Psychospiritualcoaching.com. I'm also at inspiredlifeworkshops.org. Yay. It's another way to reach me. Awesome. And if anybody out there today is watching and listening and want to come to a workshop at the Standard Hotel... I'm going to be doing, let's see, Overcoming Procrastination. Yes. And so you can just go to jennifergrace.com slash events. I'm doing an event today there and a few more through September. So check out Val and I, and we can't wait to continue to serve you all and elevate and have fun at the same Mm. time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. Always so grateful to be in the conversation with you. Yes. Thanks, honey. No more half alums. No, none. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.